In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how to use masks and keyframes at the same time. Again, a mask is simply a graphic that you overlay over a single clip or overlay over a single object and you cut or craft holes in it to see what's underneath. I have my, this clip in track number one of a sunset uh, on a beach and what I'd like to do is I'd like to use a mask. Let me show you two small illustrations of the kinds of things that you can do with uh, masks and keyframes. So what I'm going to do is with this track highlighted, I'll click on the designer button uh, above my timelines and then I'll choose mask designer. The first one I'm going to pick will be a simple uh, rectangular mask. So I'll click on that and it pops it up on the screen. I can immediately resize it if I want to and it will naturally resize it, it proportionally. I don't want proportion. I want to be able to change it more than that. So I'm going to go down into my, uh, my screen on the left side. I have a setting called Object Settings. I'll click on that. That will open up the settings of my mask. I'm going to uncheck Maintain Mask Aspect Ratio. That will allow me to do something different with this one. So I want to take it and I want to make it a rectangle. And we're going to line it up just about here with the, uh, with the sun. Let's make it maybe a little bit bigger here to start with. So what I'm going to do now is use a keyframe. If you don't see your keyframe controls, that's because this has been minimized. You minimize it by clicking the blue down arrow on the right. And then you restore it by clicking that arrow again, pointing upward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the beginning of my uh, a project and I'm going to have my keyframe be off the screen. So I'm going to drag and move this over about here. I'm going to look at my Y position as 0.354. Well, I'll need to remember that in a moment. So I'm going to take my position and my scale and click on the diamonds to set a keyframe to say at the beginning of the clip this will be the value of both of those. Then I'm going to go into the clip. Let's go in, uh, well, less about four seconds or so. Um, and then at this point in time I'm going to set uh, a keyframe again and I can simply set it by having my playhead here and then beginning to move this. It will automatically set it and let's have it come in like about here and let me look that's 358 and over here the setting was 354 so I can change either one of those I'll change the first one to 358 that makes it perfectly horizontal that's a very simple way of doing it so I click over here on the other keyframe and this is how it will come in and then what I'd like to do is I'd also like to right click here and do duplicate previous keyframe so the scale will not change but the position will and then what I'd like to do is let's move over oh another um, couple of seconds here to the uh, nine second mark total and at nine seconds uh, I want to uh, not simply change the uh, I want to change the scale so let's widen it here and move up just a little bit more and then move over this way so the Sun is on the left side and so I've changed the position and the scale at this point in time and these uh, keyframes will retain their uh, their characteristics until the end of the clip so if I go back here and I simply click on uh, preview my play area it will come in it will highlight the sunset on the sea it will slowly widen and give me a different effect. So it's a nice way to simply use a keyframe to make a difference in the object. I'm going to uh, click on cancel here and yes I do want to discard the changes. And let's, tr let's give you just another example of some of the kinds of things you could do with keyframing. Uh, again with my clip highlighted I'll click on designer and my mask designer and uh, let's click the X to clear the uh, 
the uh, mask. And this time, let's use uh, something different. This picture of a sun. I'll click on that. It gives me my uh, uh, example here, and I'm going to take it and move it and start it uh, maybe right here. And so I'll move back to the very beginning, and I'll set a position keyframe and a rotation keyframe. Then I'm going to go to the end of the clip. And at that time, I'm going to change the position. And now I see it's at 392 on the Y scale. I'll drag it over here. And then I'll change it so it's the same as 392. So it goes straight across. But I also here am going to do a rotation one. So I will uh, go into my object settings. I have rotation here. I'll change this to 360. And it should set a keyframe down on the rotation scale here. Indeed, it did. So let's uh, go back to the beginning and see what happens when we preview this one. So I have this sun going across the sun and slowly rotating as uh, it moves from one end to the other. Simply using a mask and a keyframe. And you could use this to focus on an element in your clip or your uh, your object of any kind that you want that per particular clip to end on. You can use scale, you can use opacity, um, uh, all kinds of, of settings here in your keyframes to adjust your mask to create a different kind of beginning uh, to your project. And so if we go back to our regular one, it's what we saw a few moments ago. It kind of spins like a, a sunflower across it from one end to the other. And you can be much more creative than that if you'd like. Um, but this is an example of how you can use keyframing with a mask in CyberLink PowerDirector.